though. I'm Leo. I'm Sonia's son, and this is my lovely wife, Gloria. I have three children and seven grandchildren. I'm Basha, I'm Sonia's daughter, and this is my husband, Isaac, and we have six children and 23 grandchildren and one great-grandson. Hi, Bobby, it's Jeremy. Well, when you look around here and you see everybody that came out from this one act, it's so special that so many people were born from this and so, many, so, much, so much happened. We were little children. We grew up in Danilovich, the four of us and my mother's parents. We woke up very early on a Saturday morning and, and we knew that the the ghetto was all around with police and SS, and, and we knew that that's, that's the day they're going to liquidate the ghetto. So we went all to this uh, shelter, and I remember my grandparents said that, that they're not going to go, they're old anyway. They cannot run, so they're going to stay in the house, and whatever God will give, that's what it will be. And we went. <laughs> Yeah. We went in that shelter, and we were sitting there. I was thinking, my God, if I wouldn't be Jewish, if I would just be on the other side of the fence, I would be alive. And just because I'm on this side of the fence, I'm about to die soon. Were there lots of people in the ghetto or a little bit of people? Lots or a little? The ghetto was around 900 Jews in the ghetto. And we are 37 left, approximately. The rest of them were killed. The children, everybody was killed. The Germans kept the ghetto surrounded for three days. After the execution, they made the townspeople collect the bodies of the killed and take them to the common grave, to the pit that was dug. Everybody was taken to that grave, whether they were dead or alive or wounded. The people would say that the ground over that grave was moving for some three days thereafter, as 829 people had been buried there. I remember being in the shelter. I think we were the four days, and uh, we decided to get out, and my father said, I'll go first, and the two children will go in the middle, and my mother will be the last one. And we were trying to look for that path to go, the, the path that we took a hundred times before, but I guess we got nervous, we couldn't find it. So then the dog started barking, and then the lady, and she yeah, was I, yelling. Jesus, she came. Jesus, oh. which means, it means Jews, Jews, Jews are, are escaping. escaping. Police, Jews are escaping. Like, come get them. And we started running wherever we could. They came to us on a day like this. They came by our window. They knocked on it. Sonia was covered in a blanket. She looked so awful, all in tears. As soon as they entered, we recognized them. Mother recognized them. And they broke into tears. It was so terrible, so frightening. We didn't know what to do for them, what to talk with them about, whether to put the light on or to stay in the dark. We were so afraid. They were poor. They didn't have enough to eat themselves. The husband was yes. there. They couldn't make a living. She didn't think that they don't have enough food, and yes. they knew that they would be killed if somebody was find out. When did you dig the hole? 
Well, one hole we dug in Selina's house when the, it was too cold to stay in the barn. We had to have a little warmer place, so we dug a hole under her bedroom. We'd cook for them. We would get the grain. Everybody was doing something. And we kept on through the winter like that. The house was locked all the time. The windows were covered, frozen with cold. If someone would knock on the door, they would go into the hiding place, and we'd cover them on top with the boards. Wanda and Bolesia used to always keep guard. And one time I remember the Germans came in a village which was very close, about three kilometers from our farmhouse. And we were all so worried, and they were worried, and we were worried. But she and the daughter said, God is good, you will survive. She used to always give us courage. You will survive, you'll see, you'll see, you'll survive. Sonia came to us, wrapped in this blanket. And three of my children grew up using it. I mended it and keep it till today as a memento. When I see it, I start to cry. It brings all the memories back. I remember the hard times and how difficult it was after the war. I'll never forget them, and I try to tell to my children the whole story that they should, they should never forget it. It should be for, for always. If no one had helped my family so long ago, I wouldn't have been alive, and none of my wonderful family would have been alive. And I'm grateful to these people. So if, if I could give anybody a chance to grow and get such a wonderful family, to have a chance at that, I'd do it in a second. Now we tend this grave where Sonia's parents are buried. After the war, everyone left and all was forgotten. The grave was covered with bushes and my sister and I cleared away the growth and we have been taking care of it ever since. And so I come because it is not only Sonia's parents buried here. These were our neighbors, our friends. for the righteous for recognizing the awesome act of kindness that um, people like Selena and um, her daughters have done for our family and they risked their lives for others and for all of us here. People should know that doing good is not in vain, that somebody, somebody somewhere in the world recognizes it, and it will always be recognized.